Hello everyone, this is Noodle. I am back here today with a little review on the Elte range map. I think that's how you pronounce the name of it. It is one of the new maps in the Battlefield 4 China Rising DLC expansion pack. And man, do I have to say, this map is beautiful. Look at these mountains, look at everything on this map. They really laid out well. Just such a cool looking design from just a beautiful perspective anyways. From a gameplay game perspective, it is pretty interesting gameplay on this map. I have never seen a map where I thought it was designed for an anti-air vehicle. This map is definitely designed for an anti-air vehicle. It is unbelievably open and the anti-air vehicle is insane in Battlefield 4. It is crazy. First of all, let's talk about the layout of this map. This map is laid out with seven flags, ranging from A through G. In the center you have the D flag, and the D flag is where you go and you find, you find the little station where you can hop in the bomber if your team owns the D flag. And around it, like little satellites, are the A through G flags. And on the Chinese side, you have the... You kind of start downhill slightly. But this whole map is kind of like Silk Road that I um, reviewed yesterday. It's kind of built in a bowl with kind of a mountain in the middle. So both sides kind of start level, then it goes down in the middle. But there's the mountain where the D flag is in the center there which kind of evens the map out strategically makes it fair I think both both flags or both sides have flags that are up on the mountains and flags that are down in the valleys just depending on which flags each team decides to take and that D flag in the middle there which is the odd number flag is kind of the ticket mover because if both teams had equal number of flags and they're fighting with the D flag whoever controlled that would decide which way the tickets are going in which team's favor. And as I said before, I have never seen a map <laughs> where I thought it was designed around the anti-air vehicle. But with that being said, the anti-air vehicle in Battlefield 4 is the most overpowered thing possibly in the game. And I am a bit of a vehicle whore and I don't advocate for vehicles being nerfed but this thing needs a nerf as bad as anything. Look at this right here. I can hit this heli and that D flag is like 500 meters away and he's past the D flag. He's, he's flying up to it now but he was past it. You see the E flag is 537 meters. That's probably about how far he is away when I started shooting him. And I can just, I've, you'll see in this video, I take guys out like nothing from that distance the speed of travel of the rounds coming out of the LA or excuse me the um anti-air vehicle here I guess it is called the LAV AD which is based on the LAV which is a US military made weapon it is based on the LAV but it is the D model which is the anti-air vehicle the speed at which the bullets are coming out of it is just so high that you don't have to lead your target and therefore it just makes it so easy to take out targets I mean don't get me wrong I am not bad in pretty much any ground vehicle but I'm no anti-air vehicle whore by any means in Battlefield 3 I didn't have I had hardly any anti-air kills and I just hop in this thing in Battlefield 4 and just dominate I mean pretty much every round I played on this map with the anti-air vehicle, I was the um, I was the round MVP. I mean, it was insane because pretty much any air vehicle I saw on the map, I could just lock onto and just destroy. And that goes into the loadout I'm running here. I am running this kind of as a. I'm not running this as a sit back and camp loadout because there's nothing more boring than sitting back and camping with an anti-air vehicle and nothing more gay. And therefore, 
I'm running the Zuni rockets on this thing as well. So I can be a bit more aggressive. So I can get up in the face of the infantry. I can fight some enemy vehicles. I do not recommend taking on tanks with the anti-air ve vehicle. You just run like crazy if you see a tank. Just turn and burn. How I recommend fighting with the anti-air vehicle is you gotta have the balls of a bull, but you gotta run like a little girl anytime you get into an engagement with something on the ground. The Zuni rockets are really good up close, but outside of, I would say, 100 meters, the spread on them is kind of to the point where it's, it's hard to judge how to hit the target. They're not real accurate. Although on the LAVAD here, the reticle that you see when you shoot the Zuni rockets is the same as the reticle for when you shoot just your normal, I'm using the 20 millimeter cannons, it's the same reticle, which I do like a lot better than on the normal LAV, where it's kind of got that larger square, and it's kind of a, I don't know, I don't like it that much, it's kind of hard to judge where, where you're shooting it, but they do work up close pretty well, but at a distance, they're pretty hard to judge, and the 20 millimeter cannon, which I'm using here, which is kind of a personal preference, does not do much damage to tanks. It doesn't do much damage to other LAVs. But on the contrary, it does do a decent amount of damage to other anti-air vehicles. I have gotten in a couple <laughs> anti-air vehicle wars. Woo, those are exciting. <laughs> and um, have gotten damaged quite a bit and be like, wow, just surprised. And vice versa, like damage the other vehicle quite a bit more. I mean, it's not to the point where, like, you're shooting at a jet or something, but it does do a decent amount of damage. And as you can see here, another commander is online. You can shoot down those little drones up in the sky. He probably had an EMP or a or a um, vehicle or a personnel scanning drone up there, and you can shoot those down, which I do imagine would stop the um, EMP from being effective if his drone's not in the sky but I don't exactly have confirmation on that I think that'll be something I'll have to go into the test range with another player and um, just try to or just go into a server with someone else as the commander of the different team and try to shoot down their drone and maybe I'll do a little video about that in due course but when taking on enemy infantry with the LAV the main thing is to remember like I said in past videos keep moving, keep your distance, and use your rockets. You are up close. The Zuni rockets are absolutely fantastic at taking out an enemy infantry. You don't have to hit them directly. Just hit the ground around them and use the splash damage. As you can see here, I'm kind of using, just trying to hit that ladder just so that guy's within the area of the splash damage of the Zuni rockets, and therefore it'll take them out. And when you're out of rockets, just spray and pray with that cannon. This is where I think the 30mm um, cannon might do a little better. But I just prefer the 20mm cannon for those long range distances taking out enemy vehicles. I think the extra rounds down range, even though they do less damage, kind of takes up that space and just you get more hits on the vehicle. Whereas with the slower firing 30 millimeter cannons or anti-air guns, you don't get quite as many bullets on vehicle. So I don't know. I'm I'm gonna have to test them out a little more. For the moment, I'm running the 20 millimeters on this thing because I just think for me it works the best. But it's personal preference, and I'm also also running the reactive armor, which I feel is necessary on pretty much any vehicle. As you can see here, I am turning and burning. You get some damage on this LAV, you turn around, you look where you can go, and you run like a mad dog. Get out of there, because this thing doesn't take as much damage as a tank to destroy. And it's definitely the bottom of the totem pole. The vehicle that takes the most damage is the tank. The second most damage is the LAV, obviously. And this one takes less damage than the LAV to destroy. You can disable this thing pretty quickly with a tank shot. Which leads me to the, my other attachment. 
I am using the fire extinguisher. I think this fire extinguisher may be the attachment I choose to use on all vehicles due to the new system of disabling in Battlefield 4. In Battlefield 3, everyone knows that if you got down got any vehicle down to 50 health or it's like 65 or 55 with an LAV that it would disable. Whereas in Battlefield 4, if you get a good solid angled shot on a vehicle, you can disable it in one hit, but it can keep moving after a few seconds. And therefore, I'm using Fire Extinguisher, which is also new to Battlefield 4, which was not available on Battlefield 3 vehicles. I use it because if I get a good angled shot, I don't want to be sitting there like a just a dead duck in the water. I hit that Fire Extinguisher, and I get out of there. And that moves me into how this thing is OP. And how I would, if I was DICE, how would I balance the LAVAD? Because you don't want to nerf this thing into serfdom like in Battlefield 3. In Battlefield 3, I had hardly any LAVAD kills because it sucked. Supposedly in the beginning of the game, I didn't start playing Battlefield 3 until about probably 8 months into its release. So I didn't experience the first couple patches of the anti-air vehicle. So I can't relate to that. But supposedly it's really overpowered like this. But they nerfed it down, nerfed it down. And toward the end it was useless. I mean, there were guys, those specialists who were out there and that's all they use is the LAVAD. And they had tons and tons of kills with them. But not many people used it. And because it just wasn't that good. You take too much damage. You couldn't do any damage to tanks. If you took on a vehicle, you were pretty much screwed. But in this game, you I can use the rockets. I can kind of use it as a buffer to get out of there. But how I would balance this thing is... It wouldn't take that much, honestly. All you would have to do is just reduce the speed at which the projectiles coming out of it... Of the anti-air guns travel. By reducing the speed, you increase the drop, if they wanted to add drop, which I'm not sure if they would, but I think it would help. Because if you reduce the drop, reduce the time it takes for the bullet to get to it, it would just take more skill for you to actually take down a jet, like at this distance here. I would have to lead it more, which I'm still leading it poorly. I'm actually overcompensating here. But never do this if you're a jet. Never come straight at an LAV firing at you. You lose 10 times out of 10. But it does do quite a bit of damage to me when he hits him. Hits me. But yeah, I would just reduce the speed at which the bullets travel. And therefore, it would increase the level of skill needed to get the kill. And as I said earlier, you see a tank, run. Run like crazy. Because that guy would take me out one shot as I get a lucky heavy kill there. Because... There still are going to be players who spend a lot of time in the LAV and will still get tons of kills. But you know what? That's alright. There's going to be specialists in the game that are amazing in everything. Call them hackers, call them whatever. But you know what? They spend the time. They take the time to become good at something. And they're good at it. That's fine. But just to have any player be able to hop in this thing and be this overpowered. I mean, I'm not a bad player. But I haven't spent a whole lot of time in this thing. And it's pretty amazing. <laughs> so that's how I would balance it I'd like to all thank you thank every one of you for watching this video as I say in every video if I have earned your subscription I don't expect you to subscribe because I'm so amazing no I'm not that amazing but if I have earned your subscription if you have gained something from this video hit the subscribe button I really do appreciate everyone that has subscribed to my channel until next time guys my name's Noodle remember Use your noodle.